It's time for another amazing chemistry video with Mr. Stapleton. Proudly sponsored by Farmer Union Nice Coffee. Hi guys, welcome to this next video. Today I'm going to be talking all about titration practical techniques. Okay, so this is something you will get assessed on. It is something you may be asked questions on in your exam as well. So it's really important that you know the correct techniques. What I'm going to go through firstly is the correct way to make a standard solution. Okay, so a standard solution is a solution of known concentration and purity. So what we start off with for a standard solution is we want to use a volumetric flask. Okay, this is a 200 ml volumetric flask. First thing you always do when you make up a standard solution is you rinse it with some distilled water. Now the reason for that is this helps to actually get rid of any impurities from previous experiments in it. So you squirt in a small amount of distilled water, stopper it, swirl and shake like that. Use two hands, okay? Invert it, make sure you coat all the inside surfaces of the glass and that actually helps to clean it, okay? So what we have here is a clean, dry watch glass, okay? And we're just going to weigh out our sample onto our watch glass here. So just measuring out exactly, we're going to try and get about 1.2 right, grams on there. My dissolve, I'm uh, sorry, my um, sample I'm using. In this case, we're going to be making a standard solution of sodium carbonate today. So I've got my sodium carbonate that I weighed out here. This is 1.22 grams. Okay, and I'll take my funnel, okay, put it into the top. Now my funnel I should actually rinse with some distilled water beforehand as well. Okay, rinsing that out. Right. Doesn't need to be dry, okay, because we're just going to rinse it down anyway at the end. Any conical flask doesn't need to be dry either. Okay, so we've got our sample here on our watch glass. Okay, what we're going to do is transfer that in. Okay. Now, what we want to do, probably be hard to see, but there's a little bit left on the surface of the watch glass there. So we actually rinse it in like that. All right. And then we actually rinse in what's left on our glass there as well. Okay. So what we want to have is absolutely no residue left on the end of our funnel. Okay none left inside, so that everything is transferred inside the flask. Alright, once we've got all of our solid transfer, our volumetric flask, what we're going to be doing is filling this up around about a third of the way with some distilled water, okay? And just making sure that I coat all the surfaces of the neck of the volumetric flask there to make sure it's all rinsed down. Once I've got it about a third full, what I'm going to do is stop it, okay, my volumetric flask, and I'm going to start swirling and shaking to make sure it's all dissolved. Now that's really important, that's what's called a homogeneous mixture. Okay? A homogeneous mixture is one that is all in one layer. And so you might not be able to see it, but at the moment I've still got some solid sodium carbonate down the bottom there which isn't dissolved, so I need to just make sure I dissolve that all up. If you don't, it means your concentration calculations are going to be inaccurate. Your concentration is actually going to be lower than what you calculate which is going to make your tighter value lower as well and give you an inaccurate reading at the end. So it's really important that you actually get it correct. Okay, so I keep mixing, all right, inverting, that helps it to actually dissolve really well. Once I'm happy that I've got it all dissolved and I can't see any more down the bottom, what I'm gonna do is fill up my volumetric flask, okay. Once I've got my solution very close to my calibration line, which is just here. You want to start adding your, um, your distilled water in dropwise because you want the bottom of your meniscus to sit right on that calibration line. So normally you do that with a teeth pipette. So taking the lid off my distilled water. Okay. I'll start just to add that in. And I want to get my eyes down level with my calibration line, like this, okay? and you start just adding it in, getting close to that calibration line. If you go over, it will actually completely ruin your standard solution. You will have to start again. So you get close, and as soon as you get close, you start going dropwise, right until the bottom of your meniscus 
is sitting on that line. Okay? And that is your standard solution. You stopper it, you label it to make sure you know what it is because a lot of your solutions stay the same colour. Once you've got your standard solution made, which is our sodium carbonate here, okay, we're going to use that to perform titration. So over here what we've got is some hydrochloric acid, which is being made up, but we don't actually know the concentration of this, so we want to accurately determine it using our standard solution. So there's a bit of glass that we're going to use for this. First one all right, is a burette. Right, this is a 50 ml burette. So this is used to measure our tighter values. So what we're going to be doing for this one is having our hydrochloric acid going into our burette. So always best thing to do all right, is to transfer some of your unknown into a beaker. Okay. So here's my hydrochloric acid. Okay. And I use my funnel in the top of my burette. Now, first thing to always check is that your burette is closed. Okay. So the tap in the horizontal position is closed. Vertical is open. If you leave it open while you're filling up, it's just going to drain all the way out the bottom. Okay. So I'm going to have it closed. I'm going to pour roughly about five to ten mils into my burette. Okay. So you'll start to see it filling up there. That's plenty. It doesn't need to be more than that. And then we're going to go through the correct way to actually rinse your burette. So with your tap closed, okay, take it out, hold it vertical, so horizontal, I should say. Right? And you'll notice the liquid starts to travel along the inside of your tube. What you want to do is try and get it all the way to the end. Okay? And then you start rotating your tube. You want to coat all the inside of this. Okay? Now, what you didn't actually see, because I'm just showing this once, is I actually rinsed it out with distilled water first. Distilled water helps to remove any impurities that's in there beforehand. And then we rinse it out with the solution that's going in there, which in this case is the hydrochloric acid, because we want to get rid of the water that's in there, otherwise that will dilute our hydrochloric acid and give us an inaccurate tighter value. So you rinse it with distilled water first, and then the solution that's going into it. Okay, I'm just showing you this one. Once you've rinsed all the sides of it, got all the solution um, rinsed out, we want to make sure that we fill below the tap. So what you do, you take it over to your sink, you open the tap and you let some of it drain out below. Once you've filled below the tap, that's really important because this volume down here is taken into account in your titration value. So if you don't drain out below the tap, you'll actually fill up here before you start adding in and it'll make your tighter value inaccurate. What we've done now is this hydrochloric acid in here has been diluted because it's had a little distilled water in it. So we tip that out, but we leave it filled below the tap. So what I've got is liquid below the tap here, but nothing up the top. Putting it back into my retort stand, okay, and now what I'm going to do is fill up. Now, it doesn't need to be filled up to the top. You can start it on any value, but if you first titration, it's always just nice and easy if you do start at that zero value anyway. So I'm just going to fill all the way up. Now, I don't have to worry about getting it super accurate like this, so I'm just going to go above the zero like that, always take your funnel out. If you leave your funnel in, you can see in the bottom of it there's some drips, okay? That could drip into your solution, okay? What will happen is that will increase the reading that you get here, make your tighter value inaccurate. So always uh, remove your funnel to stop any drops going in and changing your tighter value. Then what I'm going to do is drain some of this out. I keep my eyes level with where I want to be, so I want to get it to the zero and I want the bottom of my meniscus to be on the zero. Just go a little bit like little. There we go. And that's my starting value at zero. Okay? Makes it quite easy. Alright? So you read the value, okay, that you started. That's your initial tighter value. Now that I've got my burette set up, I'm going to get my pipette ready to transfer in my standard solution. So what's really important to do, right, and this is just a safety aspect, take some of your standard solution and transfer it into a clean, dry beaker. Okay? Now the reason for that is if you try to use your pipette in the neck of your conical uh, your, your volumetric flask like this, it's very easy to actually just slip and snap your pipette. So it's much better if you actually transfer it into a container like that. What you'll need is a pipette bulb filler, and they look like this. 
okay? So you got a couple of buttons on here. There's an S down the bottom, right? there's an E as well. They're the two main ones that you need to use. So to get your bowl filler ready, squeeze the S and then squeeze the ball in like that as well. Okay, so you're squeezing the S in the middle there and you're squeezing the ball in. Let the S go and that will stay, okay? Now that's how you actually then use the S to suck up. So what you do is you put this over the end of your pipette, okay? Now, again, what I've done first is I've rinsed this with distilled water to get rid of any contaminants that are in there. And then I'm going to get take up some of my solution. So I just put that in, holding it straight up and down, press the S button, and that sucks some of it up. Okay, it's, it's really responsive, so I've taken my fingers off, notice it doesn't pull any more up. I've gone to about a third of the way up the bulb in the middle, and I'm going to use that to rinse, and the procedure is exactly the same as the bureau. So I'm going to go over on its side like that, and what I'm going to do is use my finger to just pop off the bulb filler at the end. So I'm holding the pipette horizontally, you can see the liquid in the middle there, and I'm just going to get that to go down the inside of the glass like I did with the burette and just coat all the surfaces, okay? That helps to stop any dilution. Once I've done that and I'm happy with it, I've drained it out for a count of 10 and what I'm going to do is just wipe the outside of my pipette so that anything that's left on the outside doesn't go into my conical flask. Okay. I've got my conical flask here, okay. this just simply needs to be rinsed out with some distilled water, not the solution that you're putting in. Okay. So just distilled water, and like you do for most rinsing, just coat the surfaces of it, okay. swirl it around, get rid of that. Okay. Doesn't need to be dry, all right, as long as you've rinsed it with distilled water. Now what I'm going to do is pipette my 20 mils in. So this is a bit of practice that you'll need. Okay? Make sure your bulb is ready to go, that can suck plenty up. Okay? So attach it on. Now what you want to do is go up above your calibration line. So you've got this little brown calibration line here which shows you it's 20.0 mils. So I've just gone above it. Now, there's two ways you can do this. By pressing the E, the E allows you to slightly drop it down but it's very, very sensitive. Okay? So you can suck up, try and get it down to eye level, okay, like that. So if you have a look, and again, you want your meniscus sitting on that line. So that's one way you can do it. The other way is to suck up above the line. Again, hold, put the pipette at the bottom of your um, beaker. Push off your bowl with your thumb so it stays like that, okay. Now you notice here's my line, here's my calibration line, okay. So here's the top of my, of my meniscus, here's my calibration line. What you can do, if you're getting comfortable, and this is, it allows you a lot more control, so some people like to do this, is you just start to slowly twist your, your, uh, your pipette. What it does is that just slowly breaks the seal between your thumb and the pipette, and it slowly, if you notice, it slowly lowers the level down. So I like to do it this way, I just get down at eye level, slowly twist it, all right, till I've got my meniscus sitting exactly on the calibration line. Just like that, okay? I can hold that vertical, hold my conical flask on a 45 degree angle. I touch the tip of my pipette to the neck of my conical flask, take my finger off and just let it drain, okay? Now this is to stop any splashing. If you just hold it straight up, okay, or you don't have it resting against the neck of the flask, that could get some splashing, some of your solution could be lost out of your conical flask, and again, that will affect your tidal values. So it's really important you want to have everything you're measuring going straight in. I hold it for a count of 10 because there's solution on the inside of my pipette, okay? And that will slowly drain down, all right, and come out the bottom of the pipette as well. Once I've done that, I'll put my conical flask back over here. I'm gonna put my pipette back in here rather than having it rolling around on the bench. So now I'm almost ready for my titration. What I wanna do though is because I had that pipette resting on the neck of my flask, I wanna rinse down anything that's on the neck of my flask like that and then I need to add my indicator. Okay, because we're using an acid down the bottom, we're gonna use methyl orange indicator, all right? And it should go yellow, okay? And that's a really good sign. If this goes any color other than yellow with methyl orange, you put the wrong thing in. So now, we're ready to go, okay? I set my beaker up underneath, 
I have a white tile underneath the beaker, that just simply allows me to see the colour that I'm, um, I'm using much more clearly. Okay, So I've got my white tile underneath. I'm going to adjust my burette so that I will swirl with my right hand, because right? I'm right handed, so I'm going to swirl with my right hand and I'm going to turn the tap with my left hand. So notice I've got the tap pointing in towards the middle and my hand's going to go like this on the tap and I'm going to swirl with my right hand. Depends on what you're most comfortable with, okay? But this allows me, um, because I'm more comfortable with right handedness, to actually do that. So what I'm going to do, I know my initial reading is 0.00, .00 so I just start titrating my hydrochloric acid into my sodium carbonate solution. Now what we've got happening here is an acid base reaction, okay? Um, so we're forming some sodium chloride, okay? Plus carbon dioxide plus water. Now it might be a little bit difficult for you to see, but as I'm putting in, I'm starting to get a bit of a pinky colour down the bottom. That's where the methyl orange is meeting the hydrochloric acid, all right, and it's going pink. As I swirl though, my colour disappears. What you're looking for in any titration is the first permanent colour change. Okay? So I'm going to keep adding in, but because I'm starting to get a bit more pink as I go, I'm going to start going a bit more slowly. Okay? And there, it took a bit longer for it to disappear. So now that it took a bit longer for it to disappear, I'm going to go drop by drop. So this is where you need a little bit of practice. So I'm going to slowly start, just turn the tap so I get it going drop by drop. Drop by drop, and I'll stop there. Okay, I'm going to catch, there's a little drop at the bottom here, so I'm going to catch that on the side of my conical flask. Okay, and I'm going to rinse that down as well. All right, I make sure that anything's on the side there goes. And you can see as I'm swirling around, my colour is holding. Okay, so because my colour is holding, I've got the end of my titration. Now, this is the first line I did, which is what we call the rough titer. We're just trying to work out roughly the value we get to, that's why it's called a rough titer. So I read off from here, and I can see, and I'm just turning this around so I can see the numbers properly. I can see by getting an eye height that I'm on 18.4 millilitres. So that means my first tide value is 18.4. What I do now is I take my conical flask, I empty it down the sink, I rinse it out with some distilled water, I prepare another 20 mils of my um, standard solution back into my conical flask, and I do another titration. I want to keep going until I get three concordant titers, that's three that are within 0.1 of a milliliter of each other, and then I can do my calculations. Once you're all done, all right, just simply rinse everything out with distilled water, turn it upside down to drain out, and you're done. Okay. Hope this has helped you in terms of knowing the correct techniques. Okay. Go back, have a look at it, because I know I've gone through it pretty quickly. All right. Make sure you know how to clean all your glassware very properly. Make sure you know how to actually perform your titration, all right? looking for your colour change, doing your swirling, controlling the tap, and you'll be fine. Thanks guys, see ya.